right down in uh, near, um, uh, you know, near Exeter, down that way, Plymouth Flim- 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 way, you know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, down your particular neck of the woods, it's pretty clear at the moment, although you had a bit of a shocker yesterday, didn't you? Uh, Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, I nearly didn't make a video on this product because I found out something rather suspicious during my research. I'll keep watching to find out why and exactly what my research revealed. But please note, this is not going to be a full review. This is more of a public service announcement. So this is the SDR101. It's a DSP SDR receiver that covers from 100 kHz right up to 149 MHz. It has a built-in 4.3 color IPS touchscreen, hence the included stylus. CWAM SSB along with FM and wide FM are the supported modes of modulation. And if used with a pair of headphones, even wide FM stereo for the FM broadcast band is supported. Now in the box, we get a USB cable for charging, a stylus, a small manual and a telescopic antenna. The SDR101 has a front facing speaker to the left of the screen. On the right side, we find a Type C socket for charging the internal battery, an on and off switch, a 5 volt output in the form of a USB socket, and then we have the encoder, which also acts as a push button. Now, to be fair, the encoder actually feels quite nice and of good quality. The other side of the receiver, we find a 3.5mm socket where you can insert your own stereo headphones. On top, we find one connector, and that's the SMA for connecting the included telescopic antenna, or of course, you can use an external antenna of your choice. Now, turning on the SDR101, the screen seems very well laid out. And in my opinion, it does look very sharp and colorful, although the screen is extremely reflective and it looks best in a darker environment. Even though the screen is touchscreen, there are not many features that use it. Most functions are accessed by turning the encoder or pushing in the encoder while turning. Entering a direct dial frequency can be handled by the touchscreen, whether you use your fingers or the included stylus. There appears to be no real band selection to choose between different bands. However, when you enter a particular frequency, the band name in which that frequency falls into is displayed in the top right hand corner of the screen. So let's hook it up to my outside NFED half-wave antenna and take a listen around the bands. You've got any crashes in the... Oh yeah, you've got a few down, um, right down in uh, near, um, uh, you know, near Exeter, down that way, Flim- Plymouth way, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, down your particular neck of the woods, it's pretty clear at the moment, although you had a bit of a shocker yesterday, didn't you, uh, weather-wise. But it's quite nice here, it's about 24 degrees at the moment, something like that, and sunshine there, Frank, back to you. Yeah, okay, you said you were doing a bit of reading today. Uh, reading a book, four rings, Frank, do you read books? Oh, I can't remember that. Well, I can remember it's the one and only book I've ever read, which was Big Old Secret Agent when I was in school. And it was really boring, that's you. Uh, five, five, seven, for maximum, and um, maybe five by four. Uh, so please, please present yourself. As you can hear there, the AGC setting is completely useless. When AGC is enabled, it's like turning on a 100 dB preamplifier. Even turning the IF gain down or the REF down makes no difference at all. Even if the volume was set to the lowest setting, the audio still came blasting through the speaker or the AGC was set to anything but off. So is this a fault with the SDR101 or is there another reason? Well, it turns out that this is a clone of the popular Deep SDR101. Now, there are some telltale signs that prove this is a clone. The first is that when you tap the bottom of the screen, the firmware version should be displayed. But with this version, the screen just goes blank. Also, to enable a firmware update, you have to hold in the encoder while powering on. Now, while this appears to work and show you the firmware update screen, when connected to a computer via USB, 
the 101 does not appear as a thumb drive, which it should if it was an original. Now the original Deep SDR 101 firmware update procedure is a bit like the Adam Pluto, where you just drop a firmware file to the device and then reboot it. In fact, with this SDR 101 version, if we put it in firmware download mode while connected to a PC, the PC reports that the USB hardware description failed, pretty much meaning that either the feature is corrupt or it just doesn't act as a thumb drive. Now I know I've not covered receiving with VHF and the ultra low frequencies, but I got really frustrated with this product because it appeared that it could actually be quite good. Now unfortunately, that's not the case with this clone. Now I did reach out to DeepLEC about the original Deep SDR 101, but at the time of making this video, they've discontinued production and are working on a new version of this receiver, so I wasn't able to get one. Now, if anyone has an original Deep SDR 101, then please let me know in the comments about how it works for you. The same goes for anyone that has one of these clones. Does it work okay for you, or do you see the same results as I do? I guess if you can put up with the crappy AGC and the fact that you'll never get any firmware updates, then it might be an okay receiver. And I mean just okay, nothing special. In fact, I would choose a Malahite over this particular version any day of the week but maybe the original product is much better. Unfortunately, I'll never know. Now, at the time of making this video, these were selling on Banggood for around £80. I didn't check AliExpress, but I'm sure you can buy them there too. Incidentally, it appears that the original designer from Deep SDR are actually based in Asia, so it's their fellow colleagues that are ripping them off. Anyway, I hope you found that information useful and a bit of a pre-warning, and also to reach out to anyone who's got an original or if you've got one of these clones, I'd really be interested to hear your thoughts. Until the next video, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.